All right, AB Calc, welcome back. In today's lesson, we're going to go over how to find the derivative at a point using these two formulas. So the first one's our main formula. This gives us f prime of a is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And then we also have this alternate definition, which says f prime of a is equal to the limit as x gets closer to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And uh, before we do a problem, just want to give you an idea of what this is actually saying. So for the first one, we are going to start with a function. So start with a curve. And imagine that we have a point somewhere on that curve, like right there. And that point is going to have coordinates. The x-coordinate is going to be a. The y-coordinate would be f of a. And then we are going to go a distance of h to the right. And that's going to end up at another point. The x-coordinate of that would be a plus h. And the uh, height of it, the y-coordinate, would be f of a plus h. So imagine that we draw a secant line going through those two points. And we want to find the slope of the secant line. Well, to find the slope of the secant line, we would take rise over run. So the rise would be the difference in the y's, which is what we have on top in our formula, f of a plus h minus f of a, over the run, and the run would just be h. And what we want to happen is we want to move this point that's over here. We want h to get smaller and smaller, so eventually this point gets closer and closer to the original so that we end up with not a secant line, but a tangent line that touches it once. And so the derivative is going to give us the slope of the tangent line at that particular point A. All right, for our first example, we want to take x squared plus 4x minus 2, and we want to find the derivative when x is equal to negative 3. When it says x equals negative 3, that's the same as saying a is equal to negative 3. So we're going to use our first method here, which means we're going to take the limit as h goes to 0, and we're going to take f of a plus h. Well, in this case, a is negative 3. Uh, instead of writing negative 3 plus h, I find it easier to write h minus 3, just change the order, minus f of negative 3, and that's going to be over h. Now we are going to actually plug it in. So we plug in h minus 3 into the x values up here, and that's going to give us h minus 3 squared plus 4, and we're going to plug h minus 3 into this x. So we've got h, h minus 3 in there, and then we have minus 2. And lastly, we need to figure out what f of negative 3 is. So to do that, well, we're just plugging negative 3 in here. So let me do that off to the side. We can do this in the calculator. Negative 3 squared plus 4 times negative 3 minus 2. That all comes out to 9 minus 12 minus 2 more would be negative 5. So we would have subtract a negative 5, which is going to be the same as adding a positive 5, and that's all over h. Now we want to simplify the numerator. So this is h minus 3 squared. We need to FOIL it out. So h minus 3 times h minus 3 is going to be h squared minus 6h plus 9. We need to distribute here. So that's going to be 4h minus 12 minus 2 plus 5, still over h. Notice how I keep writing the limit notation all the way through. And now we can simplify the top. We, can we just have an h squared, uh, minus 6h plus 4, h is going to be minus 2h. And notice that all the constants are going to cancel out. 9 minus 12 is negative 3, minus 2 is negative 5, plus 5 is 0. So we end up with that. We still can't plug 0 in because we have an indeterminate form of 0 over 0. But we can, at this point, uh, factor or cancel out the h's. Uh, everything on top is going to get divided by h. 
So that's going to give us the limit as h goes to 0 of h minus 2. And now we can plug in 0 for h to our direct substitution, and we get negative 2. Now we're going to do it by the alternate definition. So by the alternate definition, we're going to take the limit as x goes to a. In this case, again, a is negative 3. And we're going to have f of x on top. Well, f of x is just the original function. x squared plus 4x uh, minus 2 minus f of negative 3. And what is f of negative 3? Uh, we said that that is negative 5, so minus a negative 5 is going to become plus 5, and that is all over x minus a. a again is negative 3, so subtracting a negative is going to make this a positive 3. We take the limit as x goes to negative 3, simplify the top, that gives us x squared plus 4x plus 3, all over x plus 3. And again, if we try to plug in negative 3 into this, we're going to run into problems. Uh, so we want to factor the top. The top is going to factor into x plus 3 and x plus 1. That allows us to cancel out the x plus 3's. So we have the limit as x goes to negative 3 of x plus 1 which in the end will give us the same answer, negative 2. So what that really means is if I'm graphing this, this was a parabola, uh, see if I fit here, a little graph here. So there's my parabola and it's saying when x is negative 3, uh, so that's probably on this side here, when x is negative 3, then we would have this tangent line going through that point and that tangent line would have a slope of negative 2. So that's our first example. Okay, here's our second example, number 2. And in this one we have negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 1. And we want to evaluate the derivative at x equals negative 1. So again, we're going to do this two different ways. So the first way, we want to take the uh, first definition, the limit as h goes to 0. And this time, a here is negative 1. So we're going to plug in uh, h, or negative 1 plus h, or h minus 1, into our original function. Um, I'm going to skip the setup here and just go ahead and plug it in. So this starts out as negative 2x, but instead of x here, we're going to plug in h minus 1, and then we need to square that, plus 4 times h minus 1, plus 1, and then we need to subtract uh, f of a, so what is f of a? If I plug negative 1 in here, uh, that would be negative 2, change colors there. So if I plug negative 1 in here, that's negative 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 1. And what does that all come out to? Uh, negative 6, negative 5, I believe. And so when we subtract a negative 5, it's going to be the same as adding 5. We want that to all be over h. We go to the next line here. We still want to take the limit. We have to square this out, so we have to FOIL first. Let me do this in two steps, so that's going to be h squared minus 2h plus 1. Here we're going to have 4h minus 4 plus 1 plus 5 all over h. And then we need to distribute the negative 2, so that's negative 2h squared plus 4h plus 1, sorry, minus 2, because again we have to distribute, plus 4h, minus 4, plus 1, plus 5, all over h. And combine like terms, 
can see this one's a little bit tougher. Uh, combine like terms here, we got negative 2h squared. And then 4h and 4h would be 8h. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. The constants should cancel out, and they do. And again, we can divide everything on top by h. That's what we do in the next step. And that gives us negative 2h plus 8. And then now we can plug in 0 uh, for h. And when we do, we get an answer of 8. All right, so now we're going to find the derivative using the alternate definition. So we're going to have the limit as x goes to a. What is a here? a here is negative 1. And then we have f of x, which is our original function. That's negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 1 minus f of a. What is f of a? f of a was negative 5, or f of negative 1 is negative 5. So that's going to become plus 5 all over x minus negative 1, which is going to be x plus 1. And now we can simplify. So we're still taking the limit as x goes negative 1. Simplify the top, that gives us negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6 all over x plus 1. We can factor out the top. We have to take out a GCF first of negative 2. That leaves us with x squared minus 2x and then that's going to be minus 3 all over x plus 1. Still taking the limit as x goes to negative 1. We've got a negative 2 out here. And then this factors into x minus 3 and x plus 1 over x plus 1. The x plus 1s would cancel. And we're taking the limit as x goes to negative 1 of negative 2 times x minus 3. Now we can plug in negative 1. And we get the same answer. We get a positive 8. All right, here's our last example, example 3. In this one, we have x squared minus 8x plus 10. And we want to find the derivative when x is equal to 1. So again, we're going to use the first definition. Uh, that gives us the derivative at 1 equals uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of a plus h. Here, a is equal to 1. a is, again, just the point where we're taking the derivative. So if I put uh, 1 plus h or h plus 1 in here, for x, I'm going to have h plus 1 squared minus 8 times h plus 1 plus 10 minus f of a. I need to find out what f of a is. So if I take my function here and I plug 1 into it, I'd have 1 squared minus 8 times 1 plus 10. And what does that come out to? 1 minus 8 is negative 7 plus 10 is equal to 3. So f of 1 here is 3. So I'm subtracting 3. And that's all over h. And now I want to take the limit as h goes to 0. I want to simplify the top. It's going to simplify to h squared plus 2h plus 1 minus 8h minus 8 plus 10 minus 3 all over h. Now we can combine like terms on top. And we combine and we're going to get h squared. Uh, 2h minus 8h is going to be minus 6h. 1 minus 8 is negative 7, plus 10 is 3, minus 3 is 0. Uh, at this point, there shouldn't be any constants. You might be seeing a pattern here. So the constants kind of cancel out because we're dividing by h. And now we can do that. Uh, that's going to give us the limit. As h goes to 0, divide the top by h. We get h minus 6. Now you can do direct substitution and we get an answer of negative 6. By the alternate definition, we're going to take the limit as x gets closer to, in this case, 1. So x is getting closer to 1. 
we have our original function, which is x squared minus 8x plus 10 minus f of a. What did we say f of a was? Uh, it was 3 all over x minus 1. And combine like terms on top. That gives us x squared minus 8x plus 7 all over x minus 1. What are we going to do at this point? We want to factor. So the top the numerator will factor into x minus 1 and x minus 7. That's good because then we can cancel out the x minus 1s and that leaves us with the limit as x goes to 1 of x minus 7, which again is going to give us negative 6. So you should be able to do the derivative by using both definitions, either the main definition or the alternate definition, and either way you do it, you should end up with the same answer. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Bye!